Illustrator excels in allowing designers to create stunning vector artwork, and now, thanks to its recent revamped 3D effects tools, we can turn our 2D artwork into 3D masterpieces. Follow along in today's tutorial where I'll demonstrate how to create a realistic 3D mock-up. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is set up our document. The document size I'm using is 1920 by 1080 pixels at 72 ppi. A small thing to note when using the 3D effects is if you're using an artboard size which is higher than 72 ppi, maybe you have a 2000 by 2000 pixel document and you've got it set to 300 ppi. When using the 3D effects panel, you may suffer from random crashes as it can be quite resource heavy when using ray tracing and rendering out the artwork. I will suggest using a smaller document size at 72 ppi then when we export the artwork we can do so at 300 ppi to make it a higher resolution. With that said and done let's move on to our colour swatches. I have set up the five following colour swatches so if you want to follow along with the tutorial exactly pause the video and set up these so they are accessible within the swatches panel. Next, before we touch anything to do with the 3D side, we need to essentially create a 2D version of our iPhone. And to do that, we're gonna start off with the rectangle tool. And then I'm gonna create a rectangle which is 295 pixels by 597. And I'm just gonna use the corner radius handles and round off these corners by about 49 pixels. And then I'm gonna to go to Object, Path, Offset Path. And I'm going to offset the path by minus 10 pixels and then I'm going to go to object path offset path again and offset it by minus 5 pixels essentially you should end up with three individual shapes the first shape we created I'm just going to move to one side and then I'm going to drag a selection around the other two and then I'm going to press shift M on the keyboard which is the shape builder tool and then I'm just going to left click on that center rectangle and what we've essentially done is we've just literally punched a hole in the shape underneath now these three shapes will form the front of our phone so we have the actual body of the phone we've got the screen and then we've got a screen surround next select the first shape that we created which is going to form the base of our phone and then we're going to add a gradient fill. Change the fill angle to 90 degrees and then the darkest colour at the top we're going to change to our second darkest colour and then the white colour we're going to change to our darkest colour. So essentially we get a light to dark gradient. For the screen surround we're just going to set this to black and then our actual screen we're going to, just going to use the green colour because when we move this into Photoshop we're actually going to just use this green uh, screen shape as a reference for our actual screenshot. Make a selection around all three shapes and then just horizontally and vertically center the shapes. Move them to one side and then select the main phone body shape holding the alt key click and drag so we get a new copy of it and then this is going to form the base of the back of the phone using the rectangle tool create a square rectangle the rectangle size i'm going to use is about 110 pixels by 110 pixels just set the color to black for now and then again using the corner radius handles we're going to round off those edges by about 24 pixels Position it in the top left hand corner and this is going to form the, the raised bezel area for our camera lenses. To create the camera lenses we're just going to use an assortment of circles. I'm just going to zoom in for this bit. Create a circle, this one's around 35 pixels by 35 pixels. And then go to Object, Path, Offset, Path. And we can offset the path by around 5 pixels and then go to Object, Path, Offset, Path again. Again we can use the same pixels and then once more go to Object, Path offset path and we'll just make this one around two pixels and then we can begin to just add a bit of color to these highlight all the circle shapes hold down the alt key click and drag hold the shift key at the same time to keep that perfectly in the center and i'm just going to drag a duplicate copy underneath and then i'm going to do the same and drag it somewhere in between the two most cameras seem to have three or four cameras these days group those together group that one together and then I'm just going to make sure that that's sitting vertically center. 
and then we can do the same thing again for the, the flashes or the center that sits on the back so I'm going to select the single right set of circles hold down the alt and shift key and then just drag a duplicate and I'm just going to resize that down fairly small and again I'm just going to eyeball this Hold down the Alt key and the Shift key and drag a duplicate. Select the two smaller circles, use Control G to group them together. And then we're just going to vertically align those in the center as well. And then I'm just going to adjust the colors using the direct selection tool, which is shortcut and the keyboard. And I'm just going to change the colors of the flash, just so they look a little bit different to the lenses. Make a selection around everything and go to Object, Group, and then we can just horizontally and vertically center those inside of the camera bezel and if you wanted to you can just adjust the, the size to make it a little bit bigger and then before we do any 3d effects we just want to do a bit of tidy up work so if we go to the layers panel what we want to do is we just want to label some of our shapes so we know what they are so if we just split these up so we've got our screen frame front base screen rear base camera bezel and then you've got the camera lenses to access the 3d effects panel we need to go to window and then set 3d and materials and then i'm just going to dock this onto the right hand side of the screen and then we want to select our front base first let's just move these over just create a bit of space and then we want to click the extrude option now some of these options, obviously I've already had a play about with these, but obviously feel free to tweak these as you go along. So I'm just going to use my pre-default options that I used um, previously. So the extrude depth I'm going to set to about 30 pixels. We're going to add a bevel and we're going to change that to step. What this will do is it will just create a little step or like a little recess um, for the screen. So for the width of the bevel, we're going to use 2% and then for the height, we're going to use 21%. We'll leave the repeat then for our rotation. On the X axis, we're going to set it to 34 degrees. On the Y axis, 35 degrees. And then on the Z axis, 31 degrees. We'll leave the perspective set to zero. Move over to the materials panel. We'll use the default material, but we'll bump the roughness up to one. And then for the metallic, we'll use 0 0.79. Move over to the lighting tab. So we want to uncheck the standard lighting as this comes checked by default. And then we just want to adjust the lighting values. So the intensity, we're going to change to 60% for the rotation we're going to use minus 35 degrees for the height we're going to use 50 degrees and then the softness we're going to use 76 percent and then we'll change the ambient light intensity to 93 percent underneath we'll enable our shadow and we'll make sure that the position of the shadow is behind the object we'll leave the distance from the object set to zero but we'll increase the shadow bounds to 169 percent and then if you wanted to we could turn on ray tracing or actually render out um, all our settings but i would do this at the very very end because every time you move the shape or make a small adjustment it has to re-render it every single time so the best thing to do is if we apply all our 3d effects to all our different elements position the um, mock-up however we want to position it and then turn everything on and render it out at the end and then we can obviously save that as a 300 ppi uh, png which we can then obviously import into photoshop so the next thing we want to do is actually apply the 3d effects to each one of our shapes now there is an easy way to do this we haven't got to go through and add all these settings to each shape so what you want to do is you want to select the next shape so obviously we're going to use the screen um, bezel or the you know the screen surround and if you hold down the alt key from within the layers panel on this little dot you can actually hold down the alt key and drag the settings over to the next shape as you can see all we need to do now is obviously just adjust this so um, it obviously hasn't got the shadows on etc etc so we can just go through, turn off the shadows, the material we can leave as it is, and then on the object, we want to change from extrude to a plane. And then that'll just give us the rotation that we need. And obviously we can just position that then on top of our phone. And then we can do the same for the screen. So if we select the, the bezel, hold down the Alt key, and then drag the settings over to the front screen. We can still go in there and change the color. So I'll just go in there and change that back to green. And I'll change the bezel back to black. And then just position that over the top. Highlight everything. I'm also just going to move this out of the way. So that, that is the, the front version of the phone. And then obviously now we can move on to the, the back version of the phone. 
So on the back version of the phone, obviously we want to keep the exact same settings as what we used on the base. So again, select the back shape, hold down the Alt key, click and drag so the settings get copied over. And all we can do really is just adjust the shadow or the how furthest away the shadow is from our object. So what we want to do is we want to change the height and we'll change that to 75 degrees. And that will just bring the shadow closer to the, to the phone. Next, we'll select our camera bezel. And then I'm just going to change the color of this to something a bit lighter. Again, in the layers window, we can just use our front base settings. Hold down the Alt key, click and drag onto the camera. Again, we need to adjust the color, so I'll just change that to something a bit lighter. Turn off the shadows, the material and everything else can stay the same. And then on the object, use two for the depth. The bevel shape I've changed to classic. Then the width is 8% and the height is 34%. Everything else I've left the same. And we can just adjust this again, just eyeball it into place on the phone. Next on the camera lenses, I want to actually create the same sort of bezel which sits underneath the camera lenses. So using the direct selection tool, which is shortcut and the keyboard, I'm going to select all of the bottom shapes and then just go to edit, copy, and then paste that onto the artboard. Control G on the keyboard to group them together. We'll call this lens bezel. And then on the camera bezel layer, again, we just want to select the Alt key, click and drag the settings over to our shapes. And then we can move these into place. Next, select our camera lens group. And then we're going to use the same settings which we used for the screen as we just want this to be a simple flat plane. So hold on the Alt key, click and drag onto the other little dot. And then we can position these just bring those in front using the control square bracket shortcut and position these over the over the top of our camera bezel. Make a selection around the whole back of the camera of the phone and then do the same for the front and then we just want to position these or come up with a composition that we're happy with. So I'll right click, arrange, bring to front the front phone. Once you're happy with the, the composition that you've got, the next thing we need to do is actually render out each of the objects. So the best way to do this again is just use the layers panel, select the first shape, select the ray tracing option. And what we want to do is we want to ray trace and select the high resolution output. We can remember and apply to all and then click render. And then what that will do is Illustrator will do its thing and obviously render out that shape. And as we can see, that's been applied to every single shape that we've got. Once you're happy with the way everything's obviously looking, I mean, you can still go in there and make changes to colors and all that type of stuff just by selecting an object and then obviously just changing the color. Just bear in mind that obviously every change that you make, Illustrator has to obviously re-render you know, the changes that you've made. So what we can do next is obviously move this over into Photoshop and turn this into a proper mock-up. First, we need to export this. So if we go to File, Export, Export As. But the options you want to select are High 300 PPI. And obviously, we want to make sure that it's, it's transparent. Once the artwork has been exported, we can move this over into Photoshop. So this is what the output looked like. And because we saved it in 300 PPI, if we go to Image Size, you can see that the obviously the well, it's a lot higher resolution than what it would have been if we just saved it at 72 ppi. So in terms of turning this into a mock which we can actually use, head back over to Illustrator and select the screen shape, edit, copy, then go back to Photoshop and go to edit, paste. And we just want to paste that in there as a smart object. And that should paste it in at the exact size. And then we can just position this over the top of our original blue shape. From within the layers window, let's add a solid fill color. Just use any color for now, and then we'll drag that underneath. We can remove the mask. And then I'm just gonna grab one of the colors from our color swatch panel and use that as our background color. And then I'm going to go to File, New, and I'm gonna create a new document, size 1170 by 2532. And that is the screen size of an iPhone 14. I just did a quick Google and got the, the pixel measurements. Click create. Just fill the document with any sort of color as we'll be changing this in a moment. And we can just right click, convert to a smart object, and then drag that over into our phone document. 
just close that so you don't need it anymore and then we can go to edit transform distort now you can either distort this over the top of the the screen or you can use something like filter vanishing point either way it's both options are essentially the same all we need to do is use the corner points and just position it over the top of our blue screen making sure it sits inside of the black screen bezel once you've distorted the shape load a selection around the blue screen shape we pasted in earlier select our green screen which we just distorted and then click the add layer mask option and what that will do is it will just make those corners rounded and look like the actual screen now when we double click into our smart object on our screen so double click it will load up a new document and then what we can do is we can just paste in wallpaper or a screenshot of an app or whatever you want it to be click save close the document and then obviously that will replace the green screen with obviously your screenshot and that's it and there we go that's it for this video thanks for watching if you're hungry for more tutorial content, then you might be interested in one of these videos. Until next time, I'll catch you all in the next one.